Welcome to Mastering Solutions. In this problem, they tell us that we're driving down a highway late at night and we're going 20 meters per second when a deer steps out on the road 35 meters in front of us. They say that our reaction time before we step on the brakes is a half of a second and the maximum deceleration that we can go for in the car is 10 meters per second squared. So for part A, they tell us what is the distance between you and the deer when we come to a stop. And then for part B, they want to know what the maximum speed is that we could go and still not hit the deer. So this question, especially part A, is a classic, classic test question. Part B might be a little bit more difficult than you might see on a test, but this concept and that first part for part A is a very, very typical test question. I think I probably even had it on one of my tests. So pay attention to this one. It will really help you out. So now before we even get into the different parts, let's draw a picture of what's happening to understand conceptually, which will really help us out with our organization. So we have a car and we're going along and they tell us that the deer steps out in front of us, of course, and we stop on the brakes, we stomp on the brakes a half of a second later. So here's where we're going from the constant speed. And at this point is where we step on the brakes. And then down here, this is where we actually stop. And then we have a deer right over here. So we have Mr. Deer. Okay. And they want to know what the distance is between us as we stop, of course. So for part A now, let's write a list of all the variables. So right here, the X initial for this section is zero meters. And the velocity that we're going is 20 meters per second. So I like to label these one, two, and three for the different sections so we can keep them all straight. So now for part one and part two, we need to figure out how far we went in this distance. So to do it, we're gonna be using the velocity equation. So velocity is equal to change in distance over change in time. And we'll be isolating the distance. So delta x is equal to velocity times time. The x initial is zero. So we could also write, rewrite this as x final is equal to velocity times time. Or you can also do a kinematic equation. So x final is equal to x initial plus velocity initial times time plus one half of the acceleration times the time squared. Acceleration for this section is zero. We're not speeding up or slowing down, so all this goes away. The x initial is zero, so that goes away. And so now you can see we just found the exact same thing. So either way, it doesn't matter. You will get the same formula. So now when we plug our values into this, what we have is the x final for section one to section two is we're going at 20 meters per second and it's a half of a second until we react and hit the brakes. So we'll do a 0 0.5 seconds. So 20 times a half is 10. So 10 meters, because we have meters per second times seconds, so the seconds cancel, leaving us in meters. So that is the distance that we've gone from section one to section two. Now for section two, we need to figure out as we're decelerating how far this distance is. To do that, so for section two, we're going to be using v final squared is equal to v initial squared plus two times the acceleration times delta x. We're using that because we don't know how long this section was. We have no idea um, how long that took. And so this is the only kinematic equation that has all of the variables that we have plus it doesn't include time. And so we're trying to solve for the final distance over here. So let's break this up one step further. I'm gonna move this over to that side. So minus V initial squared is equal to two A delta X. We're trying to solve for the X. So we'll divide both sides by two A, that will go away. And now we have delta X is equal to V final squared minus V initial squared over two times the acceleration. The final velocity though over here is zero because we're stopping. So for section two to three, this will go away. So now we have the negative velocity initial squared over two A. 
but we can even go one step further and add in the x initial. So delta anything is final minus initial. So we have x final minus x initial is equal to negative v initial squared over 2a. So we'll add both sides of the equation with x initial. So now that will take into account section one to two. So the x final that that gives us will be the total distance that we've gone for this whole section. So if we come over here, now we have x final is equal to negative v initial squared over 2a plus x initial. So let's plug this, uh, write all our values into this. So x final is the initial velocity that we're going right at the beginning of section two is still 20 meters per second. We haven't hit the brakes yet. So negative 20 meters per second, and then we'll square all of that. So I'm writing it this way just to show that we want the negative outside of the parentheses. And then we'll divide all of that by two times the, accelerate, the deceleration, which we said was 10 meters per second squared. We have negative 20 squared divided by two times the deceleration, which we said was negative 10 meters per second squared. So the total distance for that section is 20 plus the x initial was 10. So the total distance that we went is 30 meters. And they say at the beginning of the question that we have 35 meters with the deer in front of us. So the question is how much distance is between you? Well, there's five meters left between us and the deer. So fortunately we won't get in an accident and hit the deer. But that is just for part A. Now we need to solve for part B and figure out what's the maximum speed that we could have gone and still not hit the deer. So for part B, let's write a list of variables. So the final velocity obviously is zero meters per second because we stopped. We know that the acceleration is 10 meters per second squared. What else is given? The distance, like we just talked about, the x final, we're going to set that at 35 meters. And so we'll just get to the same spot as a deer, but won't smash it. First, before we write the rest of the variables, we want to figure out what was the maximum initial velocity that we could go to still meet all of these conditions. And so if you remember from our picture up above, what we're going to do is we're going to incorporate, so we don't have to redo all of part one, we're going to incorporate essentially part one into an equation. So now we have the delta x is equal to the velocity times the time. The velocity here will be the same as this one. And the time we said was half of a second, 0 0.5 seconds. So now let's write this equation out that we're going to be using. So we have v final squared is equal to v initial squared plus two times the acceleration, times the delta x. So now let's break it up one step further and break up the delta x. Anything delta, of course, is final minus initial. So v final squared is equal to v initial squared plus two times the acceleration times x final minus x initial. Now the x initial for this section is going to be this equation right here that we just talked about. So now we will plug that in down here. So we have v final squared is equal to v initial squared plus two times the acceleration times x final minus the initial velocity that we're trying to solve for by time and like that. Okay. So now we have the equation that we need. Now we can break this up one last step further by factoring this section. So v final squared is equal to v initial squared plus 2a times x final minus 2a times v initial times time. All right, so this is the final equation and now we can plug in our values. So the final velocity is zero, so that goes away. And then the initial velocity, that's what we're trying to solve for. We have the acceleration and this, so 
zero is equal to bi squared plus two times the acceleration we said is negative 10 meters per second squared. The x final we said is 35 meters minus two times negative 10 again, meters per second squared times the velocity times the time. And we don't know the V initial, but we do know the time, which is half of a second. Okay, so this looks really confusing. So let's combine some of the math because normally I like to always do the variables first and only plug in the numbers at the very end. But this step, I do think it actually does help to see the numbers because, and you'll see why in just a second. So zero is equal to VI squared plus two times negative 10 times 35, two times negative 10 times 35 gives us negative 700, a negative 700 what? We have meters on per second squared times meters. So what we'll have, stay with me for a second, meters squared over second squared minus over here, we have two times negative 10 times a half. So two times negative 10 is negative 20 times a half is negative 10. And we have a negative again. So this will be plus a 10 meters per second times the initial velocity. This section here for the units, we had meters per second squared times seconds over one. So the seconds go away there and we're left with meters per second. Okay, so you may be really confused and say, where are we going with all this? But if you look at this, what we have is zero is equal to a x squared plus over here we have b times x plus c. So we have a quadratic equation. The x is the initial velocity. And so now what we need to do is we need to plug in the a, b, and c to figure out what the, the numbers are for the, the x and the, the quadratic. So a is equal to one B is equal to 10 and then C is equal to neg negative 700. Now this calculator is amazing for quadratics. It already has it built in so you don't have to get any extra downloaded programs and it's it's incredible. I recommend everybody to get this calculator and I have a link for it in the description below. So click second and then go down to poly solver and then we want ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So hit enter. And then they say a is equal to one. And then b is 10. Enter and c is negative 700. So now we have x1 is that crazy thing. So five, negative five plus five square root 29 negative five plus five square root 29. And then two is negative five minus five root 29. Okay, so you might be thinking that's crazy. So now we can store them, store x1 to x. We'll store x2 to y, okay? And then no for that one and then hit enter to actually store it. And then let's go to quit. So now we can hit X and enter and we get five. So you just, it's basically makes it so we don't have to rewrite all of it. And if we do fraction of decimal, we get 21.92. So one of our X's is 21.92 meters per second for the max speed. And then for the other X, let's make sure it's not that one. We have Y, which is going to be negative 31. So obviously we aren't going to have a negative velocity for the maximum speed that we can go initially. So the maximum speed that you can go and not hit the deer is 21.92, or we'll round that to 22 meters per second.